If you ask a childhood self what car you'd be driving in the year 2021, you'd probably be picturing something like a car out of Blade Runner or the DeLorean from Back to the Future. But instead, we have the Tesla Model 3. Hi, my name's Cameron. This is a productreview.com.au in-depth look, and today we're checking out the Tesla Model 3 Long Range. What you're looking at is the most popular EV brand in the world and this one is quite arguably the most popular model because of how accessible the price is. I remember watching when this launched back in 2016 and Elon Musk stood on stage promising a 30,000 US dollar Tesla which everyone thought was ludicrous because they had the Model S and Model X which were already very expensive so to have access to a brand like Tesla and the performance that it brought at around 30,000 US dollars was super exciting and out came the Tesla Model 3. So let's talk about the number one reason as to why you'd be considering a Tesla Model 3, and that would be the price. So the Tesla Model 3 range starts off at 72,000 drive away, around there. You've also got the Tesla Model 3 Long Range, which is the one we're testing here, which starts off at 81,900. Our test vehicle here has been fitted with two options, and that's this red paint, which is the most expensive paint you can get at $2,900. Then you've also got the autopilot feature, which has been unlocked for this car, and you can option this whenever you want after purchasing the vehicle because all the cameras are fitted all you need to do is just pay ten thousand dollars for that privilege to unlock it to do some self-driving in this car and i'm going to mention all these prices are correct as of filming tesla is known to fluctuate their prices like recently they brought down the price of their range by nearly ten thousand dollars so just keep an eye out for that and make sure when you go into the online configurator you price it up correctly because this one here as we see right now with all the options on it would be around one hundred seven thousand drive away now the front of the model 3 is very distinct it is undeniably Tesla, especially with red paint. It's all that aerodynamics here. You have air pass-throughs here on the side. You have endless sensors at the front for parking and also radar. You've got beautiful LED lights, which have an excellent high beam. Moving on to the side is where you're gonna tell you've got the latest Tesla Model 3 because it got a recent facelift. Part of it was getting rid of any chrome that was here on the side and replacing it with black trim, which was traditionally on the door handles and here on the door trim. And you also used to have it here on the side reflector slash indicator. Now it's all matte black. You've also got cameras here at the front and here on the side for autopilot. Then you've also got 19 inch alloy wheels, which are standard on the Tesla Model 3 long range. You've got a glass roof and you have these pretty neat door handles, which just sort of are like very Aston Martin, like when you pull them out like this, they're sort of presented to you. So I think that's a neat trick and I think they look really gorgeous on the side. Now moving around the back, you can see this roof continues all the way to the rear trunk, which is really cool to see. You've also got a nice little ducktail spoiler, but on the performance you do get a carbon lip, which accentuates that a little bit more, but here it's nice and smooth. You have classic Tesla taillights, which have almost microscopic LEDs. They're very bright, but they're not huge indicators. They're quite small, which I found quite interesting to see. You've also got some badges here on the back. Dual motor indicates you've got obviously dual motors so one at the rear and one at the front for all-wheel drive and then you've got your iconic Tesla badge here you've got a reversing camera and you've also got a swath of sensors back here as well but that's it there's nothing else really here it's all smooth and tapered off for improved aerodynamics and there's no complex diffuser there's no exhaust muffler obviously there's nothing here that's going to impede on your boot space so that's going to bring us obviously onto that. So in the back here, you now get a power tailgate in the Model 3, which is a godsend, which is great to see that Tesla's listening to the Tesla Model 3 feedback. And now they've incorporated a power tailgate, making this feel a lot more premium. You've also got a little bit of rubber that runs along the back here because traditionally this glass roof, although it looked good, would drip water right into the boot compartment here. So Tesla have listened and they've incorporated a nice little rubber gasket here, which is gonna prevent any water or rain dripping off here in the mornings or if it's raining, uh, stops rain just pouring straight in. Or if you live where snow falls, stops slush falling in. In here you have acres of space. And I mean acres because you have no need for a high boot floor because there's no need to have any complicated combustion engine components like a muffler there's nothing here so there's a deep deep storage bin down here which you can almost step into because it's just so deep and it falls almost to the floor of the car so you have a 60 40 split which i'll show you in the rear in a second but 
it's just an amazing amount of space for a sedan <laughs> like you can go all the way back in here like oh, you can almost climb in here oh. there we go so much room that i could just relax back here and enjoy the rest of my afternoon now let's have a look at the engine shall we so i'm using the app which is also your key i'll show you that just now you can unlock the front here and we're going to check out the fact that this doesn't have a engine and that's because the motors sit between the wheels and there's no need to have any components exposed which is great because now you can have space to put anything like a backpack which we actually have here so here's our camera bag goes in just fine there is so much space up here for just small things like backpacks and other shopping that you might do so you can quickly access it with the front rather than having to look through the enormous boot at the back for any shopping that might have gone missing so this is a really cool feature the fact that you do have space up here in the front trunk aka the frunk so if you don't have an engine what are you looking out for what sort of specs are you looking for well this is something with electric cars that is very different and quite foreign to people who aren't used to specs on a motor. So yes, you can run through the kilowatts and newton meters and everything like that that this motor provides, but that doesn't matter because it's all dependent on how you drive, what the car's capable of, the aerodynamics, the road resistance, the temperature, etc. So let's talk about range. Now you join me outside because we're in the great outdoors because we're talking about EV range and in particular we're talking about three different types of measurement. You have the WLTP way of measuring range which stands for Worldwide Harmonized Light Vehicle Testing Procedure. You then have NEDC which stands for New European Driving Cycle and then you have EPA which is the Environmental Protection Agency way of measuring range. Here in Australia, you're most likely just to come across WLTP or NEDC. Now, what's the difference? Well, NEDC provides a much more enthusiastic way of measuring range because it's a bit out of date. But unfortunately, that's what you're gonna come across when you're looking at buying a Tesla. So that means the NEDC range for the Tesla Model 3 is 657 kilometers, which is just fine if everyone else is using the same measurement. But now with the WLTP measurement, that is widely used across a lot of European EVs, which are the main competitors here in Australia for the Tesla Model 3. And the WLTP range for the Tesla Model 3 is actually just 580 kilometers. Still highly impressive for a EV that's under $100,000, but it is a little bit less than what Tesla claims on their website. Now, Tesla gave me those figures for 580 kilometers. They're not gonna hide it. It's just a different way of measuring EV range. Now, WLTP takes into account day-to-day -day driving conditions, weather, and different options that you've selected for the car. So WLTP figures can vary for the same model depending on what options you tick. Sitting in the Tesla Model 3 has made me realize how old every single other car interior feels. Tesla have gone to the absolute lengths to make this feel spacious, modern, and simple. Part of that is this glass roof, which yes, brings in a bit of heat, but you're not gonna get burnt. You don't have an instrument cluster. Instead, you have a flat dash, which acts like a desk, and you can put like your parking tickets up here. It's very cool. You have a speaker that runs along the windshield. You have air vents that are tucked away in a little ledge. And here you have your center screen. So yeah, no instrument cluster here you have all that information in the center screen. This is gonna include stuff like Netflix, your charging, your unlocking and locking of the trunk and frunk. You've got all your information for autopilot here and much more. We'll go into this in just a second. Below the screen, you have contoured charging pads here, which are all part of the new update in the Tesla Model 3. And that allows you to put your phone here, wirelessly charge it, and it won't move around, and it just looks nice and feels nice. You have a huge center storage cubby, which can even allow you to put something as big as a reusable water bottle down here. And you've also got USBs in there, so you can connect a controller to play video games on your Tesla Model 3 while you're charging, or just for the fun of it. You've got Pretty decently sized cup holders here, which allow you to put, yes, your reusable water bottle, because no, this is an electric car. We care about the environment, no plastic here. And plenty of space so it won't really jiggle around. And even more space if you want like a giant Starbucks coffee, for example. You've got a nicely sized glove box in here with a 12 volt connector and it's all carpeted lines. So it's all very pretty and very nice to feel. All this leather you see here is vegan leather. There is no real leather in this car, which is a nice touch because obviously an electric car company looks like they're caring about the environment, which is great and applause to Tesla for actually doing a full vegan leather fit out in this car. 
Here's the steering wheel. It's super simple. There's nothing complicated on here and you have these multi-purpose buttons which allow you to do things like change the position of the steering wheel, change the position of your mirrors and cycle through bits and pieces on the screen and even play video games too. So I love the design of the steering wheel. It's so simple and it's so not distracting and it depends when you, what you activate on the screen will depend what these buttons do. Now sitting in the back of the Tesla Model 3, I doubt anyone's going to complain because this is my seating position for someone who's 5 foot 11. Yes, my knee room's not so roomy, but my feet room's okay, but I have plenty of floor space. There's no contours here because you have a flat floor thanks to the batteries being on the ground and no need for a drivetrain or exhaust tunnel. You have two USB-C ports back here with some air vents, you have little pockets. On the back of the seats, you have side storage bins and you have nice Alcantara finish here as well. You have the glass roof which goes over your head which is pretty spectacular to see. You have a nice center armrest with big cup holders again for your reusable water bottle of course. And then the middle passenger is obviously not going to complain because they have their own feet space, arguably a little bit more than what the side people get because they have to worry about people sitting in the front. So anyone sitting in the middle is going to be pretty happy with their feet space. Now, you can also fold down these seats. It's in a 60-40 split configuration with this being the 60%. Now it doesn't go all the way flat, but that's plenty of space. You unfortunately cannot remove the parcel shelf back here because it has speakers and anchor points for baby seats. So you can only sort of put items that are probably around 40 centimeters tall and put them all the way through. But if you do get them through, you're gonna have plenty of space. Although this angle here may be a bit of a problem. That's all right. So you fold it all back up and then got plenty of space to carry passengers too. Okay, so the center screen, you see this in every Tesla, you wonder what's in it, and I'm about to show you what's inside. So this is all the information you need to know about your car. There's no dash, there's no drive instruments, this is it. This is the information that you'll be getting for your Tesla. So your speed and all your other driving information comes up on the top right because that's in your peripheral, the same eye movement you'd make for your instrument cluster. It's a slight adjustment, but I have had no problems with this being up here than being in front of me. So that's a benefit there. Um, it's all clean, very nice. The interface is super smooth and super easy to use. Occasionally it does freeze up, um, I have found, but that's very rare. And if it does, it snaps out of it like a drunken stupor. It's really quick to react if there's any issues. And also you're getting weekly software updates, which is pretty cool. So it means that this isn't the only screen you'll see. It can update, it can change. Um, it's pretty cool. So we'll start with like these menu buttons down here. So this is your car information here. There's like quick controls for controlling your mirrors, steering wheel and everything. You've got lights, you've got locks, you've got your display, you've got driving modes as well. So you've got stop different types of stopping modes. So at the moment I drive around on one pedal, which is hold. So the rolling resistance of the motors allows me to lift off the accelerator and brake, and then it'll come to a complete stop because it reads stop lines, which is pretty cool. Then you've got roll, which would be like rolling up in neutral. And then you've got creep mode, which is like a normal automatic. And you've obviously got, obviously got your different sporty or comfort steering modes, and then your standard or chill acceleration modes. You've got your autopilot features. So if you pay $10,000, this is what you're going to see. You're going to see all these different features for autopilot and helping you with the self, full self-driving features uh, and so this one is able to detect different bits and pieces on the road uh, which we'll see when we get going but also you'll be able to read traffic lights and let you know when there's a traffic light if it's red and it'll slow up if it's a red light or it will ask you to go if it's a green light so it's pretty cool um, about how smart this uh, technology is here. Then you've got your navigation settings, pretty simple. You've also got your safety and security servicing um, buttons here, and then you've got your software information. And here you can also name your car. We've named this one Doge. So you'll be able to see also all the details in the upcoming uh, software updates, which usually uh, I've, I've heard are usually about weekly. And then you've got your own notes manual in here, and you've also got a button for your glove box. Unfortunately, the glove box, you have to close manually. So a bit funny, it's a button that all good. You've also got your con cameras controls here. So it's going to show out of the eight, it's going to show you the three cameras here and two on the side and one on the uh, rear, which is really helpful. You've also got front and rear parking sensors. You've got quick controls for your wipers, but if you want to quick wipe across the windshield, for example, because they're usually left on auto, you can just press that and the wipers will just come across. So you can go to toy box and this is where you're going to have various amounts of fun with your car. So you can have emissions testing mode, which is like putting a whoopee cushion on this someone's seat. 
excellent. We love it. And then you can put it fart on turn signals. So we go to turn. And there you go. You're going to have plenty of fun with that and you can't catch people off guard because the way it sends the sound around is pretty cool because it sends it to the back left if it's in the back left seat or the front right if it's in the front right seat. And we'll turn that off so I don't get surprised by farting on turn signal. Now we can go to tracks. You can make your own beats while you're parked, which is very cool. We love that. And it's just something to do while you're waiting to charge. You've got a romance mode. So you can jump in here and we can get nice and cozy and what it's doing it's turning on the climate control turning on the heated seats and it's directing hot air towards the front passengers and yeah get nice and cozy you've got to love that anyway we'll exit out of that and then you've got a sketch pad of course because everyone loves a bit of doodling when they're bored and then you've also got a Mars mode which is something that allows you to turn your navigation into Mars the surface in your lunar lander rover, but um, this is so useless because it doesn't overlay any information. It's just a Google image of Mars. So yes, an actual image of Mars on your screen, but um, not very useful, but we all know why that's there. Anyway, you've got a Santa mode, which is very exciting. So your car turns into Santa and you get a nice song coming along. And you got to indicate and you get jingles every time you turn. Very fun. We love it. Then you've also got, oh, we'll turn this off. Then you've got a rainbow road feature, which means when you're driving, you do four clicks down on the, uh, the gear stalk. And that's what activates this rainbow road feature. And you also get Will Ferrell's cowbell skit playing in the background. And it does go on for a little bit longer. But if you know what I'm talking about, you know what I'm talking about. If you don't, you're not, <laughs> you can find that out later. Anyway, then you got entertainment. Jump in here, you got all these games here, which are really fun. And the best one here is this beach buggy racing one, because we can jump into here. It does take a little while to load, but you can control some of the games with your steering wheel and the brake pedal and these buttons on the steering wheel here, which is really cool. So you can jump in while waiting for this to load and you can basically start playing beach buggy with your steering wheel. So here we go. So if you just tap on the screen, you get different volume controls. So here we go. So I can just turn like this. And the actual wheels move as well, so you want to make sure you have space either side. And then if you tap the brake, it's going to slow the car down. And if we go through here, we're going to be able to get some different games. Oh, there we go. My body has been launched from the car. Let's hope that doesn't happen. You've got theater, which means you can watch Netflix, watch YouTube, watch Twitch, or just watch Tesla tutorials. Uh, this is great. I loved watching Netflix while I was waiting for the car to charge. Really exciting because it's just has a great bright screen, the sound system as well. I can lay back in my seat and it just becomes a very relaxing and enjoyable experience to charge. So I actually look forward to when I charge because it gives me a chance to catch up on any TV shows I'm missing out on. So exiting out of that, then we've got a web browser where you can view your latest car reviews from productreview.com.au, of course. And that's all you'd be doing in this because those are the best places to go for car reviews. And you can go through and it does take a little while to load up. But then once you're here, you can go watch your favorite view on the A35 AMG, for example. Then you can jump into charging and you'll tell how much, uh, how much charge you got left. And then you've got schedule for here. So we can do scheduled charging, which then allows us to be able to set a limit so we can get the cheapest electricity and only start charging at home when we start the clock. So say if we get cheap electricity after 10 p.m., there we go, we can set that and the car will only start accepting charge uh, from 10 p.m. onwards. So. That's great. It's really good if you're being conscious about how much you're spending on electricity. Now, energy, this just shows your energy graph here. We've obviously been a bit liberal with how we've been driving and then you can see where we've been uh, not so great and when we've been spending a lot of power. So you can also connect your iOS calendar, which is great. Uh, you can also do it for Android as well and you can sync your calendar here. So you can just quickly view that. Then you've got heated seat controls. You've got climate controls. So we open climate. You can then control where the air comes from because it's along this slat here there's no actual vents to move at the front so you can put your fingers up and down and you can split the air so you can get them away from your face so you can bring it down you can bring it up and it's great you've also got dog mode which allows you to leave your dog in the car and leave the aircon running so we'll amp this up because it's kind of warm in here and so one of the coolest features of the tesla model 3 is the fact that your key is your phone now yes when upon delivery you do get two credit cards which look a little bit like this and they do look quite nice but 
It's the 21st century, we don't use credit cards anymore. Those are just your backups. The real thing you're using is your phone and the app. So when you get a Tesla Model 3, you get set up with your own Tesla account, your app then syncs to the car, and then you've got all the information that you need plus more from the phone app. So straight away I can see how much charge we have, what condition the car is in, it's parked at the moment. And from here, you can do stuff like control the climate, so we can turn the climate control on. We can pop the frunk, so easy said than done. And we can jump up here, open that, get whatever you need out here. You can hear that climate control working away, so we'll turn that off. And then you can also lock and unlock the car quickly from the home screen as well on the app. Now, you can jump into some menus, like you can jump into climate and actually turn on individual heated seats. You can even turn on internal demisters, so it means that you don't have a foggy car when you come in. If it's a cold day and you set the heat inside and then you come back and all the windows all fogged up, you don't have to worry about that. You can then go down to controls, so you can vent the windows here. You can then flash your lights if you don't know where your car is in a dark car park. You can also honk the horn. And then you can also <laughs> do the trunk as well. So it's a power tailgate, which means you can close it from the app as well. So we can close that. You've got a valet mode, you've got sentry mode, which means that if someone gets close to your car or bumps it, the car will detect that event and it will send you an update when you get inside the car. And if you have a USB formatted to the car, you can save those clips and use them just in case someone's done something malicious or if you've just caught someone having a closer look at your car because that's what usually happens. You've also got a speed limit mode for those younger drivers or anyone you might not trust so you can set an actual top speed with a pin which is kind of cool. You've got charging locations and also your charging conditions so it's just a bit more in depth uh, about what sort of charge you've got left in your car and then where your nearest superchargers are to quickly charge and get on the move. You've also got your location so you can see where your location is on your car which is great and you've also got summon. So this one's fitted with a $10,000 autopilot and self-driving mode so that means you can do a simple thing like this, so we can move it forward. So say if we're in a tight car space, and that's why we've moved out to this big car park, you can make the car move forward and backwards on its own. So there's no one in there, there's no trickery here. This is literally on my app, which is pretty exciting. And then we can stop that, because it's a bit silly, you're going too far forward now. And then we can put it, hold this and put it into reverse, and that's no problem as well. So we put that in reverse, and if you have any kids, dogs, or anything like that, they're not gonna get run over because the car is very nervous about how it conducts itself. So right now, it may even correct itself around me, but it is a very nervous driver in this mode. Okay, let's just say you've walked out to the car park and the car's all the way over there, and I cannot be bothered to walk over there. I am really tired, my legs hurt. So what are we gonna do instead? We're gonna have the car come to us. So. We're just gonna tell it on the app, this is where we are, please come here. And sure enough, <laughs> here it comes. Here we go. Tell you what, for 81,900, to get your own butler, it's not bad, it's not bad. I mean, more of a chauffeur, but I mean, it does other things too. Here we go. Oh, what's it gonna do? What's it gonna do? Close enough. St still, still close enough. Anyway, let's walk in. Do -do 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 -do. And off we go. Okay, we're at a supercharger here, and this is one of two in the greater Sydney area. There's one in Macquarie Park, and there's one here in the Broadway shopping center in Ultimo. This is definitely the least quiet space to shoot this and the Macquarie one's not even better because it's still in a parking lot. That's where you're gonna find them, in these parking lots. So this is a Tesla supercharger. This is the plug that you want. And all you have to do is that this is the side where the charge port's on. You raise the plug over here, there's a button on the plug. You press that, it opens up your charge port, which is really cool. And then you literally just plug it in. You'll get a blue light confirmed on the Tesla and it's blinking, that means it's charging. And then you can have a look inside See what I mean by being not quiet? <laughs> and then you're gonna have all your information on the inside, but let's jump in, it's a lot quieter. It's so quiet in here. It's so quiet. It has no business being this quiet in here. The only loud thing that you can hear in here is the aircon when you want it to be working a bit harder, but right now, 
it is just one of the most relaxing interiors I've ever been in. Here on the highway, I'm absolutely comfortable. The lane position in here is really easy to get because you have this really low windshield and an open dash that I can easily see where I am on the road. My visibility is insane. It's like being in a fishbowl in here. So if you don't like being looked into, I think it's just a little bit of a privacy issue because I feel like everyone can see me. But to be honest, on the outside, it's just like a normal car, but you can see out really well. So using autopilot is so relaxing because all you know is that the car is got eyes up in front, I feel like I've got enough visibility here to see what's going on. I have no issues trusting the car on a highway. On I would not recommend using this on suburban streets. It's just too ad hoc at trying to decide what to do and also there's too much happening that the car may not react in time if you're trusting it that much. Just sitting in this tunnel here, I'm absolutely comfortable, even though there's cars whizzing around me. I just maintain a sensible distance from the car in front. It will flash blue on the screen if it um, thinks you haven't touched the steering wheel enough in a while. But the whole thing's designed that you're meant to loosely hold the steering wheel and let it drive for itself. But you don't have to hang your hands here on a real world test. I wouldn't recommend doing this uh, too often just because you still have to take control occasionally. Like when you go through to a merge on a different lane, for example, it's best to be in manual control because the car's not really smart enough to do a merge until unless you're telling you to do a complete lane change. Hooning in the Tesla Model 3 isn't highly encouraged, but if you must, <laughs> the acceleration is brutal. So we're at a standstill and then a 0 to 100 time is at around 4.4 seconds and it's as easy as just putting your foot on the accelerator like this in three, two, one. <laughs> That's brutal. That's brutal. Being able to accelerate like that is unheard of. In terms of the instant torque that you get, there's no waiting for a transmission to shift. There's nothing of that sort. It's all about speed, torque, and instant response. Even cruising at 60 here, we can easily get up to speed, up to 80 for example, and just... <laughs> you feel that in your gut, it's visceral. It's like nothing else. It's a experience that you only really get to have when you're on, say, a roller coaster or something. But it makes overtaking cyclists, for example, a non-event, and they're never bothered by the car because it doesn't make any sound, so it's a really relaxing car to drive past people on. It's insane how fast you're able to go in this car. It's ludicrous, and that's exactly the word to describe it as Elon's put in his top performing models. There is a ludicrous mode, and there's justification for that. And that's been the Tesla Model 3. My thoughts on this is that this is the game changer. I know we know Tesla has been around for a while, but this one at this price range and this sort of performance is unbeatable in the current market. You cannot find a car that is this price that will perform this well, have this level of luxury, and is also an EV, which is just incredible for a car like this. I think it's better than pretty much every combustion engine motor that I've driven, driven and the driving experience trumps everything else in terms of making it feeling it archaic because this is the future. This is where everything is going to go and this is what you should expect in times to come and this should be the benchmark for all great EVs moving onwards. And if you have a Tesla Model 3 or you have an EV, remember to leave your thoughts on your own car on productreview.com.au because I'll certainly be reading them and using them for future reviews. So if you have some thoughts, leave them there. Other than that, if you're not subscribed, consider it because it's good fun here. We have plenty of press cars coming up and that's been the Tesla Model 3 Long Range. Thank you so much for watching. My name's Cameron and we'll see you in the next one.